Ah, uh, good morning from Liechtenstein. No, Luxembourg. Luxembourg. Small European countries that start with an L that I always get backward. Sorry, Luxembourg. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> now that we've offended the small nation, let's carry on. And we're touring castles today. At least that's the goal. So what can you tell us about this one? This is Simmern. And the internet is not good here. It was amazing that we actually found it at all. So unfortunately, I can't look up anything else. Okay. We think it's privately owned, so we're just going to be likely viewing it from the outside. But... Uh, we're a little out of breath because we're walking up the hill and I'm going to show you why here. This is the road leading up to the castle. It's narrow. It's a little wet. Oh, Ooh, thank you, church bell. Nice touch. It's obviously nine o'clock in the morning, as you can see down there. But you know, one of our first rules of exploring is never go in anywhere. You don't know how to get out. And not knowing if this road come to a dead end, we didn't take our little rental car up here. So that's why we're walking and a little out of breath. My translations aren't all that good, but usually if there's a red sign that has anything to do with entering, it's not a good thing. It means don't go in there. Yeah. So this is where the little road would have ended. So yeah, it's a good thing we didn't bring the car up here. I mean, there's room to turn around, but why take that chance? And check this out. This place is, uh, again, since we couldn't really look up much about it, we didn't really know, but apparently it's abandoned and partially in ruins. This is certainly something we don't get to see in North America. Here's a look at... A tower or a corner of it that is now in ruins appears to have some fire damage to it. This must have been like a root cellar or something. But it's built right into the side of the hill. The castle itself is just incredible. Oh yes, big hole in this walkway slash entrance leads down to another door that I'm assuming says don't you dare come in here. And what's, does this take us down into a dungeon or something? Like, I'm kind of scared to, oh, okay, never mind, it doesn't go very far. It's a gas well. Yeah, utility connection. You, you hurt yourself pretty good if you fell into it, but you probably wouldn't die. Yeah, which is always our goal, not dying. Check out this uh, portal in this rock wall that you would have been able to use for defense. Coming right up the road, anybody who was approaching your castle was very much uh, a target if necessary. This is cool. The rock wall here is kind of crumbled apart so we can get a peek inside and see just how overgrown it is. Some birds up on the top there. Some glass still intact. That awesome balcony there. Oh, I know this is our first one, so, you know, we're bound to be impressed, but this is incredible. I love it. <laughs> so we were just having a good laugh when we were checking google maps and things to try and find some castles to come explore one of them and we think it was this one had a one star review with a comment that says needs restoration i'm thinking that person kind of missed the point because this thing is fantastic for us it's five stars needs restoration <laughs> <laughs> all right we're heading off to the next one we have moved on and now are in Usuldonga Luxembourg and another castle. This one is also mostly ruined, but it is still functioning as part of the town hall. And here's a good example of the combined use. You have 
the ruins of this wall but then when you get over here there's a modern day lift slash elevator and over there the administration offices are still in use so it's a very creative and adaptive reuse of a historic building so the sandstone building has a date of 1934 so you know it's several hundred years newer than the castle itself I'm not exactly sure of when the castle was built. Dating a castle is really difficult because they get destroyed and rebuilt and added on to so often. Thank you, cue the church bell right on the schedule again. Um, the other thing, of course, that's difficult when it comes to dating a castle is they're very demanding, wanting flowers and jewelry all the time. Okay, well, the sign on the door said tour from 8 to uh, 1900 hours so that's what we're gonna do so we came through a door and now we're in this very dark tower with a spiral staircase this sounds like fun all right we made it to the top of the tower and there's a bit of a skylight up above here and uh it just kind of dead end. But there is one level lower, a bridge that goes across to a different section. So we'll try that next. And of course, when I talk about going down, I'm almost scared to hold my phone over that abyss, but it's a long way to the bottom. <laughs> Whew. Very nice. Looking down over the town. Of course, castles always were built on a high area for defense purposes. And I just made the mistake of looking down and realized, oh, this is an open grate looking right down into the courtyard. Oh boy. Okay. And we've made it to the top of the middle tower. You can hear from the church bell, it's 10 o'clock. Yes, we are right on top of the castle. This is the highest point on the tower. I apologize if the video is a little shaky, but my phone, I didn't charge it last night, so the uh, battery is very weak and using the gimbal really kills my battery life so I wanted to uh, save as little or save the little battery that I had to record here and hopefully it'll charge before we get to the next one so before my battery runs out completely I just wanted to say farewell from up high on the castle tower here in Usadonga, Luxembourg. See, I got it right that time. Off to the next place. Next stop on the Great Dan O'Can Castle Tour, Pettingen Castle here in Luxembourg. Mountain, area. Hmm. Yep. The old well. Oh well. Old well. All's well that ends well. Well, I should stop with the well puns. Well, uh, you know, second rule of Dan O'Can exploration, always try the door. Towers weren't actually built until 1571. Okay. But according to what we can read here, the original start for the castle's 1243. So, like we said, there's a whole lot of uh, 
issues when trying to say when a castle was built because it's always being added on to and changed. And this now green space here is of course where the moat would have originally been. You know, unlike many other things, uh, stereotypes, tropes, the castle with a moat is a real thing. Picture number one is an 1854 drawing of the castle ruins. Number two is a reconstruction of what it would have looked like in the 13th century. Number three here is a reconstructed drawing of what it would have been in the 17th century. This is a modern day aerial photograph of the area. And down here shows uh, American soldiers in the castle courtyard in 1918-1919. So gives you an idea of what it looked like at that point. And interesting fact, Pettingen was one of the best moated castles of the country. The square complex was about 30 meters on each side and it was surrounded by a 15 meter wide moat. And another door, and can't get in there, but you can kind of peek inside to see what it looks like inside one of these towers here. It's a very, very cool castle. Some additional little details. We're suspecting all these little holes along here are probably where there were supports for the wooden structure or the house that was here. You can clearly see along here this arch. This was a window or yeah looks like a window because it doesn't go all the way to the ground. So all those little details actually here's what uh, that would have looked like before it was filled in. So yeah it was a little window that would have looked outside. So many great little details still visible even today. And just shooting over the fence here, another look inside one of the towers. A little bit of graffiti, but remarkably intact. Beautiful castle. Love them all. They're all have a lot of uh, commonalities but they're all unique in their own special ways. Another uh, foundation here of a tower that's long since gone, but this is kind of cool. I'm standing right next door to a school, and you can see there's the school playground literally in the shadows of the castle wall. So, I mean, how cool would that be to grow up going to a school that is next door to a ruined castle? I don't know, maybe in Europe you take it for granted because there's castles, it seems, everywhere, but for someone coming from North America, that would have been pretty freaking cool, man. Next up on the castle tour is Berg Beaufort or Chateau de Beaufort. Yes, it was a bit of a harrowing drive, so Dan has just managed to catch his breath. A lot of super narrow, windy roads with barely enough room to pass another vehicle, and there were plenty of vehicles going the other way. So, a <laughs> little scary, but we're here. Yeah, this is like our third day of driving in Europe, and it's, I want to say, getting easier, but on the other hand, it's very different than North American driving. It's narrow it's fast it's aggressive it's uh it's fun <laughs> <laughs> so having now introduced the castle i guess we should let you actually get a nice look at the castle and it looks like there's a couple sections one that's kind of intact in use and then this section here which is kind of laying in ruins which is really the part we like this is a foundation of something here. You can see the, the steps, and over here there's the remains of a wall and a door. So 
perhaps a chapel or something like that. We've seen a few of those attached or were attached to castles. Despite our uh, second rule of exploration, I don't think there's any need for us to try that lock. It's an impressive structure, especially when you're standing down here at the bottom looking up at it. Things are quite muddy here, trying not to ruin the last of our clean clothes. We still have two days left before we head home. Okay, well, this one's not open in the winter for touring, and so we won't be able to get inside and take a look at it, but we're off to the next one because here in Luxembourg, there's always another castle to visit. Okay, check this out. If you asked a child to draw what they think the ultimate castle looks like, it would look like this. No, not this, but that. This is Chateau de Vianden or Vianden Castle. Un chat at le chateau. Oh, beautiful. And yes, forgive my French. Just take her home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, people like go to Mexico and adopt dogs. Oh, cute cat. Boom, shoot right down onto your enemies as they come up the road towards your castle. So, having now paid our 14 euro entrance fee, it is time to go inside. So, Vianden Castle was built between the 11th and 14th centuries on the remains of an old Roman fort. In 1820, under the rule of King William I of Holland, the castle was actually sold off piece by piece and left in ruins. So, the visitor center has a number of exhibits about the history of the castle as well as some archaeological excavations that have taken place here over the years. This is really cool. They're casting light onto this section of the old wall to kind of show you where things were in relation to where they are today. Paving of the wall. The yellow up at the top is showing where the wall used to be and how it was added on to above it at some point in the past. Earlier when we were at the other, there we go, I was going to say earlier there was a outline of a guy walking up the stairs that I saw. Don't fall, buddy. Check out that fireplace. It's quite the chimney. So having toured the visitor center, we're now heading into the castle itself and the self-guided portion of the tour. And really, can you even call yourself a castle if you don't have several suits of armors decorating your hallway? Ooh, we're back outside. 
So there's the ticket booth down there. And through. And then there's the entrance into the courtyard. And that over there is the visitor center where we were. Now we're going to go in through this little door and see where it takes us next in this labyrinth. <laughs> The acoustics in here are fantastic. It sounds amazing. Give you an idea of how high up we are above the town. There's the river way down there. So I guess this would have been the height of modern kitchen accessories and cooking in 1547. Yes. Ah, dining accommodations. So this was the well. And if you look way down there, there's actually still water down there. Oh, well, and to go outside, that's a luxury. Yeah, and there's the mechanism for hoisting the water up out of the well. That's a pretty amazing reconstruction of the well hoist. Okay, we saw this room through the glass doors when we first came in. We just thought it was not accessible, but it turns out it's station 19. You just have to wander your way through the maze first to get here. Huge room, and again, a fireplace at the end here where you could actually burn full trees if you wanted. And it apparently has started raining since we came inside, but there we are, looking down, way down. Well, that is probably as good a place as any to wrap up our little tour of castles here in Luxembourg today. We, uh, I think, saw six, perhaps. Uh, there was one that we didn't show you. We couldn't really get close to it, couldn't get a really good vantage point to take even any pictures of it. So you'll have to take my word for it that we saw it. But uh, great day of touring. Tomorrow we head back towards the Netherlands and Amsterdam. Hope to see some windmills and things. Keep watching the series of videos as we go here on this European vacation and we will catch you at the next one.